Hello friends, this is Carrie and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today we have three awesome stories from the Entitled Parents subreddit. Let's begin. Our first post is by Inks in the Water. You're a writer? Great! Do my kids homework and give her free English lessons. I'm on my phone. I'm not American. English isn't my first language. Mildly useful information. In my country, it's customary to live with your parents until you get married. Please don't give me crap for this. They're lovely people and I adore living with them. Background. At the time of the story, I, at the time, 24 female, was riding high in my career. I was working for a famous, in my country, screenwriter, and we were doing projects for Hetflix and Spamazon. I put writing my book on hold for this. Before anyone asks, both shows went into developmental health and will not be released internationally in any case. My parents and I were moving into a fancy new apartment building that has its own cafe. You cannot access the cafe unless you're a resident or have been given a pass. I was in there one day, getting coffee and chatting with other residents while waiting for something to be delivered. You all know what ED and EK means. If you thought erectile dysfunction when you read ED, I wish he had it so I would not have had to suffer through this ordeal. A nice couple was telling me about how much I was going to like living there and how nice everyone in the building is when in walks, entitled Dad, with EK, eight-year-old girl, in tow. A cold wind blew in and my steaming cup of coffee turned tepid. Entitled Dad, who I have never seen before, points at me and says, OP, you're the famous writer. I writhe under the accusation as I was in no way famous and had no idea who this lunatic pointing at me was. The couple backed away and EK runs up to me and hugs my legs. Thrown off balance, I dropped my coffee onto my foot, which turned back into scalding the moment it touched my foot. Howling in pain, I hobbled to the sofa and sat down as the staff scrambled to get me some ice. EK still had a death grip on me, and I had to pry her off. The nice couple was handing me napkins when Entitled Dad plowed through them and pointed at me again. ED. OP, you look just like your mom. I met her in the lobby and she told me you were a writer and that you were here. This is my kid, Miss Kleptomaniac. EK, now setting down her backpack next to me. Me. I'm sorry, I have no idea who you are. ED. I'm Mr. Asshat, so since you're a writer, you can do EK's homework for her. And give me your number so I can set up a time for you to give her English lessons every day. This is about when I thought I was having a stroke. I'm a teacher now? Is this kid opening up a textbook? Me. I think you have the wrong person. I don't teach. Entitled Dad. I know, but you can start now. It's our duty to teach the youth. So I'll just pick up EK in about an hour, okay? I actually have to run. I'll get your number from your mom. And he walked out. Walked out. Leaving me with his loud, belligerent girl who insisted on going through my purse. She then proceeds to shove her homework at me and demand that I do it while she played on her iPad. Spinning with pain and confusion, I pried my purse away from EK who immediately began to scream. I hobbled out of there, wincing, while EK stayed inside demanding that the staff give her cookies. I made it to the lobby where Entitled Dad was terrorizing others. He looks at me and apparently loses what was left of his fragile mind. Entitled Dad. What are you doing here? I told you to finish EK's homework. Did you leave her alone in the cafe? Me. Yeah. That's not my job, and yes I did. I need to get something on my foot. You can go get her. Entitled Dad proceeds to bar my way to the elevator and demands that I wait until he gets EK so that we can all go up to my apartment and I could do her homework there. This is where I kind of lost it. I yelled for security and they came running and took one look at me leaning against the wall in pain and escorted me into the elevator. Entitled Dad was yelling at me the whole time saying that he would be up there soon. So here's where it gets worse. In the elevator, security informed me that he was a realtor not a resident. He would not be allowed up to my apartment after what I told them. Upstairs, my parents were horrified. My mother apologized for telling anyone what I did. Apparently, he told her and some others that he was a resident. Edie cornered her in the lobby later and demanded my number. She gave him a piece of her mind and told him I was injured and told him his foot would be someplace unpleasant if he or his brat, I mean kid, ever approached me again. He backed down, but told her, I should be more understanding because OP is old enough to get married and have children of her own. 
Who stays unmarried at 24? She had him escorted off the premises. He is now banned from entry for harassing residents. EK stole what she thought were mints from my purse. They're herbal laxatives. Crappy treats for little freaks. Edit. You guys are crazy. Thank you so much for the awards and kind words. I've been in a major slump and your words are beyond encouraging. To the people who don't believe me, Aw, how will I live? Thanks again. Edit 2. Since people are asking and messaging me to find out where I'm from and who I wrote for, etc. This is where I'm from and I hope this satisfies your curiosity. It's Wakanda, folks. Wakanda. If you've been watching until here and you are enjoying the content so far, please drop a heart emoji in the comments section below. Our next story is by Senpai Julian. Entitled Mother Tries Stealing My Avicii CD gets fired. I posted this on other subreddits. So this happened a few days ago. We have the entitled mother, EM, the kid, EK, and of course me, by the way. I'm Dutch and just 15 years old, so English isn't my strongest point, but let's begin. So I was at a big electronic store to finally get a CD that I've been wanting for over a year now. So we head to the store and I'm really excited to finally get it. First, my parents wanted to check some beds out with me, and we go to Ikea. It took a while before I finally got there. So I finally arrive. I walk over to the CDs and start searching, and there it is, the most beautiful looking CD to exist. I grab the CD and headed to the checkout. This was about in a 20 minute span of what's about to happen. So the first time I see EM and EK is at the checkout where they cut me off in line and go in front of me. I don't really think much of it. So I let them check out because I'm kind of insecure, so I just let it slide. But then, after I check out, all hell breaks loose. The EM is waiting for me at the exit, and the conversation goes something like this. EM. Why did you cut us off? Me. Miss, I didn't cut you. EM. You did. Me. Well, ma'am, if, if that's the case, I'm sorry. And this is where the EK comes in. EK. Mommy, can I have that CD? EM. Yes, mommy will get it for you. Mind that this was the last CD available and I was not going to give it to her. EM. How much? Me. Excuse me? EM. For the CD. My little boy wants it. Me. Sorry ma'am, but it's not for sale. I've been looking forward to this moment for over a year now. EM. Ah, come on, it's just a stupid CD. Me. If it's stupid, then you don't need it either. EM gets mad at this point. EM. I'm an adult and you should listen to what I say. At this point, my parents were arriving from a different store. Me. Ma'am, please calm down. I can give you a link to a site where it's still available. But she was not having it. EK. But I want this one. So at this point, I know what's going to happen. EM yanks the CD out of my hands and starts walking away. Me. Hey, give that back. EM. No, I found it. Me. I still have the receipt and shows it. EM. Casually says that it's still here. Me. But I... EM starts making a scene and tells everyone that I stole her CD. So I do the only thing possible. I yeet the thing out of her hand and run off with it. Just kidding. I show her the receipt with my personal info on it so that she sees that I bought it. And of course, she turns tomato red. She calmly gives me back the CD and walks off. My parents drive up and it's done. But I don't think it's over yet. Oh no, this is only the beginning. I return a few weeks later to the same store to return an item that I bought there over a month earlier. It was a graphics tablet for drawing, but I discovered that I didn't like drawing that much. So I get there, and guess who's working there? Yep, it's EM. This is a quick break from the story to make sure that you're staying hydrated and well, maybe it's time to get some popcorn cause boy oh boy, it's about to get hectic. So how the store works, you basically get a card, wait your turn at the desk, there are three of them, and of course, my card leads me straight to EM's desk. So I gently walk over there and put my item on the desk, and tell her I want to return this. The conversation went like this. EM. You can't. Sorry. Me. Why not? Did I do something wrong? EM. This is not the right receipt. Me. Um, yes it is. Look, it says right here, Wacom 1 Medium. This is the item I bought. EM. Yes, but the receipt is from four years ago. I have a form of autism which makes me really good at remembering specific things I don't even want to remember, but I somehow do. And I do a lot of research before buying. Me, but ma'am, this was realized only three years ago in January of 2017. EM. No, it wasn't. Me. Yes, it was. I read it online. EM. That's a lie because my husband owns that company. Me. Grabs the box and the receipt and asks her what's the name of the company. 
Because if your husband owns the company, you should know the name of it. Em, that's not important. Trying to get a glance of the box I'm holding behind my back at this point. Me, ma'am, if you keep going on like this, I'm going to report you to your supervisor. Em, do it. I won't get fired. He likes me. Me, asking a different employee for a supervisor. The supervisor comes over and I tell him everything that's happened so far. SV is supervisor. EM, you've done this before, LMAO, and I have warned you twice, and now this is the third time. I'm gonna have to release you from your position. I made it a bit shorter for reading comfort. EM, you can't. You like me. You can't fu- Supervisor cuts her off. In fact, I can fire you. I'm the boss. EM, making a scene already. No, I will not leave. Supervisor, then I'll have to call security. I really don't want to. EM, do it. Call them. You won't. You have a soft spot for me. This wasn't true. Supervisor grabs the phone and dials the number for security. Security arrives five minutes later and escorts her out of the store, fairly calm, to my surprise. Supervisor, we're so sorry for your inconvenience. Me, it's okay, sir. I actually wasn't okay. I was kind of traumatized and still am, but I can't make people feel bad about themselves. Supervisor offered me a 100 euro gift card as an apology. So, of course, I accepted it. The boss did my return instead of an employee. From the gift card, I bought myself a launch pad and some drinks for me and my girlfriend. I hope you enjoyed my story, and I hope this doesn't happen to anyone else. Have a great day. Our final story is posted by TR33 Branches. Entitled Soccer Mom demands I wake up everyone in the college dorm because her daughter needs to do laundry. First time poster, on mobile, sorry for formatting, etc, etc, TLDR at the bottom. This happened in late 2015 on my college campus. Cast, me, first time resident assistant in a co-ed upperclassman dormitory building, EK, witchy resident, sophomore, on a women's soccer team, ESM, entitled Soccer Mom, EK's mother, GA, grad assistant, my direct supervisor within the res life, for context. For those who aren't familiar, RAs are college students who are responsible for dealing with issues their fellow resident students experience in the dorms. We enforce university policies, generally try to keep the peace, and keep everyone safe and healthy. A group of four girls on the soccer team lived catty corner to me, across the hall, down one room. They threw loud parties every week, their guests often trashed the floor, as well as threw drinks on my door, ripped down flyers, etc. I was incredibly chill, and at the most, broke up their parties after issuing two warnings. When I could hear them playing beer pong through my own closed door with headphones on. Never really called campus security because I didn't want to be petty or make enemies. I had a pretty wild party life on the DL. I didn't want to lose my job slash free housing. And thankfully, karmic justice was delivered. I got a text from EK one day saying that she saw a dead bug in her room. She sent me a picture and I suspected it was a bed bug. I had had them before in my own home, so I knew. I immediately reported this to the Res Life Director and fumigation was scheduled for the next day. This meant the EK's whole suite had to clear out for three days as well as the residents across from me, next to and above and beneath them. My roommates and I got to stay put. They were also advised to deep clean their rooms, wash all textiles in hot water. I break the news to EK and her roommates in a group chat. Crap immediately hits the fan. Not half an hour later, my supervisor, GA, a super cool, mild-mannered, level-headed guy who just wanted to finish grad school and help college students, knocks on my door and asks me to help out with the situation. EK's mother, ESM, is raising hell in her daughter's room. She's fuming about having to drive out in the middle of the night, 10 p.m. ish. She lives in the next town over, like 15 minutes away, to help her daughter clear out of these disgusting squalid conditions. They have the door propped open so they can schlep all the personal belongings into the hallway and out to their cars. ESM is speaking very loudly and it echoes in the hallways and stairwells, disturbing the hell out of anybody in the two room radius. She goes on and on about being a social worker and knowing how bed bugs work and how horribly inconvenient and traumatic the whole situation was for her kid. And this is all couldn't have come at a worse time because the girls have a game tomorrow and they need their rest. 
In the midst of all this, GA and I just stand there and show our support and presence as university employees. We let ESM know that we're sorry for the massive inconvenience and happy to help with whatever we can do to make it easier, but a lot of this is out of our control. At one point in her tirade, ESM pitches a fit about how all EK's bedding and clothing need to be washed to prevent the spread of the bed bugs. Imagine her displeasure that the two washing machines on our floor are currently occupied. ESM. Why are people doing their laundry at this hour? I need these machines. Me. Well, people keep different schedules. I'm sure the person will come back for their clothes when the cycle is done. You're welcome to use the washers when they're empty. Timer shows that there were maybe 15 minutes left. ESM. No. These need to be washed immediately in hot water. Bugs are living in my baby's room. Me. I'm sorry, ma'am. The washing machines on this floor are full. We can try going to another floor's laundry room and seeing if they have any open machines. It's not like it was a long trip either. At most, she had to walk 30 feet to an elevator, go up one floor, and walk another 30 feet to the next closest laundry room. ESM. Take their crap out. I don't care if the cycle isn't done. I need to wash these clothes now. She has a game tomorrow. Me. I can't touch someone else's clothes like that. But I can see if I can find whoever's doing laundry and ask them to take it out. In the meantime, I could put an out of order sign on the door so that you can have full access when the machines are empty. Okay? ESM. Go find them and get their crap out of the washer. Do you know how much I pay in tuition? I should have exclusive access in this emergency, and I better not have to pay for laundry. Me. Yep, I do. It's not a cheap school, but laundry is included in the room and board, so it won't cost anything extra. Feel free to use whatever is available. Let me go find whose clothes are in the washer. I reluctantly knock on every dang door in the hall at 11 p.m. on a weeknight, sheepishly asking, Hey, is anybody here doing laundry? A parent needs to use the machines ASAP. A lot of people didn't even bother to open the door. Those who did, quite crankily, said, Nobody's doing laundry, and closed the door in my face. I reported these findings back to ESM, who did not take this well. ESM. They have a game tomorrow. Doesn't anybody understand? I need these machines. Me. I'm sorry, but I cannot and will not remove someone else's wet clothes from the machines. And I cannot allow you to do it either. But I checked the third floor and their laundry room is empty if you want to take everything up there. ESM threw a glance at GA, likely expecting him to override my statement pitch some poor kid's stuff on the floor. GA. OP's right, ma'am. We can't do anything about the taken washers, but you can use the laundry room, but you can use any laundry room in the building. Every floor has at least two washers and dryers. And it's late, so most of the machines should be free. OP, can you get some extra detergent from the duty booth, please? I happily oblige, grateful to leave this awful woman's presence for five minutes. ESM huffed out a fake sounding thanks, and ultimately accepted that we had done as much as we could. She was much more preoccupied with hauling her all of her daughter's stuff out of the preoccupied garbage bags. I gave her a couple of Tide Pod samples as consolidation prizes and retreated down the hall to my room. The next day, I ran into GA on campus and he thanked me for handling everything so well and apologized for the woman being so crazy. I said, honestly, I'm not even mad. Those witches got bed bugs, and I don't even have to move out of my room. Karma, if I've ever seen it. We shared a laugh, and the building got sprayed for bugs. Nobody wanted to party in the bed bug room for the rest of the semester. TLDR. Witchy college students find bed bugs in their dorm room after weeks of hassling me. Mom of the student demands that I, the resident assistant, grant her exclusive access to the dorm laundry rooms and remove other people's stuff from the machines mid-cycle. At most, she got some Tide Pods. That's all the stories I have for today. I'd like to give a big thank you to the OPs for sharing their stories to the Entitled Parents subreddit. Links to their original stories will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show them some love and an upvote. If you enjoy the content on this channel, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.